Warning, the things you are about to watch are done by a complete novice. These videos are for interest only and made by an idiot, so please don't be an idiot yourself and seek professional advice before doing what you are doing. Unlike this idiot, enjoy the video. Okay then, what we're just going to go through is the number 12 cooker. We've, what we've got here is the actual outer casing assembly with the two latches, one pointing to here. Carrying handle, yeah, which is in two parts. It's on the top eight and the bottom eight for just easy to carry. We'll go around and name all the parts once we get it into it. Okay, opening it up and having a little look inside then. We can see the actual main burner assembly here. We'll just go and name some parts as we'll go through. Okay, start off, we've got the main burn part itself. Okay, that's a burner head. We've got the operating tool, which is down to the right hand side. We've got the control valve, yeah, which will come more apparent when we're later on. We've got the pump handle, yeah, which just screw out. Okay, if you notice there's a little latch that just attaches into there. We've actually got the fuel tank itself, we've got store anything. We've got the fuel filler cap, just screws off nice and easy there. And if you look on the top, we've got a pressure release valve, and that is unscrews as well, just to relieve the pressure out of the fuel tank once it's pumped up. Okay, if we look inside, underneath here, under the burner head, we've got the preheating cup, which we'll show you in a minute. Okay then, at the top there, we have the grill, which is just, uh, it's nice and simple, comes off. Yeah, as you can see, not much to it. We've got the funnel that's to the left hand side, yeah, it's just to help us fill it, fill it up. It's got little gauze in it, yeah, to stop any rubbish going into it, as you can see there. Don't really use it, I've got a modern one to fill up with. Obviously the operating tool slides in through the hole on the right hand side onto the control valve. Fully clockwise is off, fully anti-clockwise is to clean. We'll talk about this when we're lighting up. You can see there, it's attached by a chain so we don't lose it to the actual base itself. Okay, moving around to the lid then. Just turn it around. So you get a better view of it. Okay, the lid has a little screen inside it. The windshield was locked away by that catch there. All it is, is simply lift it up. Open it up then using the two lug holes just connect it in it's a bit faffy there you go locks into place with the two catches at either side yeah just to stop wind get, getting onto the actual bird head itself with a pointed out there on the side then there's some handy lighting instructions yeah i'll get a photo of this later on Right, but it's just simply how to operate it with kerosene or with diesel, how to light it. Because there's two different ways you have to light it. It all folds away back into the lid and do the catch up again. Okay then, so right, to get strip it down a little bit, we've got two sort of pongs here. It's nothing out really, just to keep the actual fuel container in and then obviously keeps the burner head in and all this comes out as a wanna, nice and simple, just lift it up slightly, okay, just push them back and then the tank and the burn head come out all as one unit, like so. As you can see at the side there, obviously we've got the control valve, get it in view, control valve, which is there and then underneath it we have the preheating cup, yeah. So obviously the fuel goes in there, it'll preheat the tubes, turn it into vapour so you get your flame. <coughs> As you can see, you're just a bit of a close-up on the pump itself and the actual filler. We'll get rid of, it, rid of the main body for the time being. 
because what we're going to do we'll go strip down this a little bit further because it's not holding pressure we'll try and get it so it's actually working in some sort of decent manner as you can see on the other side then you can see we've got the rubber ring inside what we need to change because it's got it's old and then inside here we've got the plunger to change as well okay what we'll do is we'll strip off and uh, strip it all down we'll get the filler cap off well, it's nice and simple and we'll go on to that okay moving on to the actual filler cap itself then if you can see here it's held in by this piece of wire all it is is a simple squeeze and it will come out all this does is just keep the filler cap so you don't lose it comes out nice and easy as you can see there if you look inside them the rubber it's absolutely perished yeah it's really old and it needs exchanging because i feel like it's not actually keeping any of the pressure in because it's actually dried up okay so what we'll do is get this wire out of the way all we'll do is just feed it through the hole what's actually into the pressure release valve okay and get it out like so right the rubber inside looking at it it's all dry yeah i don't think it is it's got actually holding i'll try and pull it out one way over and we'll get some pliers and get them out yep some needle nose pliers we'll get in give it a good squeeze yeah i'm not gonna keep it so it doesn't really matter if i actually break it rip it or anything it's all dry and brittle like right? try and work our way in get it round yeah yeah struggling a little bit here get it give it a pull and off it pops easy enough as you can see there yeah it's a bit gunky behind it needs cleaning it up okay then so we'll get the kit okay we've got it stripped down now if you look here i've got a little bag what well, i've got from fettlebox.co.uk and everything inside it's all the washers so you can see there i've got the new washer to replace for the filler cap so what we've got to do first though we're just going to give the actual filler cap itself a quick clean down i've just got some some kitchen towel because it doesn't look that dirty i'm just going to get the gunk out from inside it giving it a good wipe and that lot getting all the grime and dirt out i know i could clean it a bit deeper but i'll come back to it a bit later on <coughs> we need to get ourselves right in deep yeah and get all this gunk out because it's like years and years of dirt what's inside it so giving it a good wipe and that lot just checking into all the screw threads and that lot so there's no dirt in there all right oh Trying to find a bit more clean, find a little bit more, just give it a good all clean out so the seal will actually seal against this brass lid and the actual fill tank itself. Okay then, so what we'll do now then is we'll open up the packet, we'll try and find it, get the new washer out and compare it to the old one. Yeah, the old one, you can see it's all brittle and that lot, <laughs> exactly the same size, it's a good fit. Yeah, the, the guys there know what they're doing. Yeah, it's about the same thickness as well. But as I said, that old one is just really dried up. So we'll get it in here. It'll take a bit of faffing to con uh, to make it a complete seal. I'll try and get it in as much as I can using the, the actual pliers itself. Just push it around, trying to clear some thread. It looks nice and tight. got a plan to get it all the way on so just to get a bit of thread and that lot yeah it takes a bit of time a bit of faffing about yeah there we go <coughs> just exposing a bit of thread on the actual filler cap itself what i'll do then i'll just get the tank and so it's an even pressure all the way around i'll just start screwing it on get it on and it will hopefully press it all the way down nice and evenly all the way around and i'm not going to put a hole in it with the actual pliers itself let's have a look let's see what we've done yep so there you go it's sat into the groove nice and uh, nicely <coughs> all i need to do then yeah is have a look at this pressure release valve Just unscrew it all the way off unscrews all the way out as you can see there's a lot of gunk on it yeah i'm just having a close look at it as you can see there yeah you can see the gunk on it i don't think it will actually cause any major leaks and that lot i'm quite happy with it I'll put it back on yeah make sure you screw it all the way in 
Yeah, so it exposes a hole on the inside. Now we'll get the actual wire itself and thread it back through through the hole. There we go. Oh, bit of faffing about. Just nice and easy clips in. Then again, we'll squeeze it together. And we'll get it back into the fuel, uh, the fuel tank itself. Okay then. So we'll go take the plunger off now. Okay. So it's nice and simple. There's actually a bolt. You want to screw some main actual cylinder in, and then just this here. What we can unscrew. It actually takes the piston out itself. Yeah, taking it out, if you have a look at this then, at the head, you can see it's all minging, it's actually cracked, it's really, really worn out, it's actually in disgusting state. I'll give it a quick wipe down, see if I can show you a little bit better. Yeah, try not to make it crumble in the hands. Very brittle. Yeah, just having a quick look at it. Right, okay then, so as you can see here then, yeah, you can see the crack and that lot, so it will be applying the pressure that much, as you can see, as I'm moving it around. Right, just having a quick look again. You can see all the cracks in it, when I bring it back into the camera. Yeah, there we go. So I do need to take it off. So here we go from the throttle box again. Here's the new one. You can see the difference. Okay, of the two different types. And you can see the new and the old one. The old one's absolutely had it cracked. All down the side. So I don't think it will be building up as pressure as much as it should do. It may work. You may have a suggestion. Yeah, just put it in the comments below. But I'll try and take it off with this over stupidly sized spanner. It's the only one I had to handle at the time. May get it adjusted on it. Try and unscrew it off. Realise it's on mega tight. I need another way to work off. Get it off. Right, I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, once I've got some grips onto it and use that stupid spanner, I got it stripped down. So there you got the actual bolt off the top, actual piston head, the piston rod. Yeah, just have a quick inspection of the piston rod, make sure all the threads are okay at the end. Make sure there's no damage to it. Yeah, which there isn't. Oh. Looking at the spring itself, make sure the spring's alright. Yeah, that's just a return spring so you don't actually keep bashing the top of the actual head itself. Looking at the actual, it, actual well, the piston head itself, it, it's actually in two parts. We have to separate from the bolt what's on the other side. Yeah, skip forward a bit because it took a bit of faffing to get it actually loose. Strip it down, take the bolt off the back and take that part out as well. Which keeps it out. If you're looking at it then, just quickly inspection, you need a flat head. Yeah, and obviously a spanner on the other side to get it off. Yeah, compared the two actual heads, you can see one's a bit more rigid than the other. The old ones basically had it there by now. So wing that, right, I'm trying to put it back together. So I'm putting it back together here now, right, and it soon comes apparent that if we turn it around, that the hole in it is different to what I've got there. Only later I found out that it's actually two sizes to this. Yeah, there's a one I've got, which is a larger one, and there is a smaller version of this as well. <laughs> what I need you to do, yeah, is try and work out how to get that onto that. Yeah, as I see here now working it out okay after a bit of faffing around got it back on yeah tightened it up and closed it so it's pinched tight yeah using the flat head and the actual spanner on the back there okay put it back together and make sure the springs on the heads on yeah it doesn't slide all the way down all right get the bolt there's no washer to it you get it in there we go finger tight in There we go, and get it nice and tight, finger tight. And then just crimp it together with a spanner on the top. Okay, tightened it up. Looks okay. All right, just a quick, quick inspection before I put it back in so 100% it's right. Yeah, 
we can see there yeah, it's uh, didn't wreck it too much putting it back together as i said probably a better way of doing it but hey doesn't move yeah it just spins nice and freely and we'll get it back in okay then we've got it seated in nice and easy all we do is just push it all the way down screw it tight make sure the other side's off first to fill the caps off so it goes in nice and easy as you can notice there there's a little bridge there what actually locks the actual piston in pump in that's how you sorry, twist it in yeah line the lugs up so you can pull it out give it a, a test pump and go to the other side okay back to the filler cap then as we said before just putting the wire in feed one in squeeze it in get it squeezed in that fits it nice and easily just screw it up nice and tight okay only one thing to do now is give it a test Okay, so we brought it outside now, and I'm just going to take out lighting procedures for the number 12. Okay, you know, the way I'm going to do it is as if it was diesel, but I'm using obviously keratin. So, got a brand new filter, oh well, sorry, filler cap, filler cap, filler funnel, okay, to actually assist. It's got a breather pipe in it, it just makes it easy, it doesn't spill everywhere. Okay, get a good glug in there. I'm going to try not to spill it everywhere. Okay, good glug. A good shake. Let's put a cap on that. Make sure I don't spill it. The cap on to the filler tank. Make yeah, sure it's nice and tight. Make sure the pressure's uh, pressure valve's tight as well. Okay, and we'll go give it 20 pumps. Okay, 20 pumps later then, what we're going to do is make sure everything's off. Take the grill off. Just get a bit of piece of cloth. Wrap it into the preheater cup. This, remember, this is how it says to light with diesel. Keratin, you just you can light it straight away, but I just like to show you how it is. So, obviously, put the control lever in. Turn it all the way anti-clockwise to clean position and what you'll see is all the fluid drip down into the heater cup and soak that rag of what you just put in there. Okay, once it's all nice and soaked up. See just I'm just checking it there. Yeah, just make sure it gets all nice and full and fully close it off. Get your lighter or whatever you wish to do so and light it up okay there you go you can see it just taking to uh, taking flame there and what else gonna happen is that flame now it's gonna heat up put all the pipes ready for the cooker to actually be turned on you gotta wait until it's actually fully actually heated up the pipes just before it um just before it goes out turn it on to halfway and it should light. We'll just come back to it once it's heated up. Okay, it took a bit of time to get going. Yeah, so here you go. Here's the instructions, light instructions, what's on the side of the number 12 cooker. And that's about it hit the pause button have a good read through that if you like what you've seen hit the subscribe button and the like button and give us a comment um, check out my other videos because this is not only what i do yeah it's adventures of a board block so i'm doing everything so there's mini builds and there'll be adventures out things to come up yeah there's one tender build and hopefully we'll get the red mini out and get that actually fixed and welded together so hit the subscribe hit the like button and i'll check you out next time cheers for watching